the term content is a new construct. Yeah. In the sense that I have a channel, I need to put out content. For me to watch your brand, don't make it look like it's advertising. I like this ad. Yung, uh, there's this father going to this worker to be able to get this jacket. Because he re regalo niya dun sa anak niya. That's Tom's Levi's. Brain. Levi's, yeah. That's, okay. Yes. Wow. It, di ba? Ang galing eh. Di ba? Super. So I like that. I like that ad. So within a certain amount of time, they were able to communicate something. I like the Star Wars commercial where they wanted to reenact. They wanted their friend to be able to experience Star Wars na yes. 3D and with motion. So it's a story. Now, you also may have commercials like uh, with no judgment, uh, no judgment. <laughs> uh, Oi, oh, we spent so much time together. Ganyan, ganyan. We almost got married. Apparently, you went with someone else. Then I remember we were eating a burger or a chicken. In this joint, this is personal. I mean, I'm not no no ano. Pero so magkating kwento hugot eh. It always plays to your emotions. Yes. But at the same time, parang huy okay na sana kaya lang may biglang nakita ako yung ano parang binebentahan mo ako ng ah uh, yeah. Uh, so medyo bigla kang ay nawala ako sa moment, di ba? Uh -oh. So I don't know. With some it resonates, with some it doesn't. So it's a matter of taste. But if they know their audience, maybe their audience likes that, then di ba? Who's to argue, right? Not only were they hitting storytelling there and touching the emotion and showing the relationship of a dad and a son, which is one of the most powerful relationships ever, but also it's showing multi-generational appreciation for a brand. Because like, here's this father appreciating Levi's, getting Levi a Levi's jacket that is now a trend, denim trend for the hipsters, the younger ones, and then at the same time, hitting that whole customization ability, which is a big thing for Gen Z and, and millennials. And it's just crazy. I'm like, did they think about all of these things when they made it? Like, did they plan all of this? Or some of these things are happy accidents because if they did, if they did, my goodness, the execution, sir, is just, woo. I mean, good. crazy. The Globe one, the, the, the Star Wars one. Was that Globe? Globe, boy. Globian sir, and the other one oh. is yung naka stormtrooper na helmet and oh. he was cool because he has an oxygen. I mean, yeah. whoo, galeng galeng. For people, I guess, who have um, like their eyes open in terms of product placement and things like that, it gives you that whole. You know how it feels, sir, when you're watching a film and it's like beautiful, and then all of a sudden a guy drinks beer like this, a guy drinks beer like this, and then it says Bud Light here. And, it, and it's so obvious that you're placing that product right there. If you saw, di ba yun, yung Bohemian Rhapsody, di ba, Live Aid, tumutugtug si Freddie Mercury. Yeah, yeah. Okay? There's like a can of Pepsi. But in the actual concert, there was. Pero talaga, okay. yes. Pero talaga, pero talaga. Yes. But you know, not just advertising also, di ba? Yes. But in the, the reality is, meron. Maybe because we're in this sister arena of whatever it is that they do. Maybe that's why we're more sensitive to that. Let me qualify Wala namang tama o wala rin bali. There is yeah, no yeah. right or wrong. There is only, Cringe. is it good or is it bad? <laughs> is the execution good or is it bad? At the end of the day, with this, where the, let's say, the, the brand placement and advertising is very apparent, but if they reach their metrics, who are we to argue? Diba? Correct, that's true. They achieve what they wanted to achieve. That's but true. if maybe on the aesthetics part where, hmm, parang... Na off ako. So, it, it, but, talaga, sir, but yeah, I agree with you. It's really with how it's done. But again, if they attain the goal, if there's more sales of that chicken or more sales of that beer, then by all means. Okay. Diba? Okay. But if your market starts maturing and they start picking up on that it. out, then, ano na, parang, then maybe it's time to maybe we should try this, try that. So, it, it's a function of the market also. Kunyari, in the States, it's a very controversial topic. Kunyari, once they go woke, you go broke. Diba? Now, how the market responds to that, if you want to take a stand, your brand takes a, a hit. If it doesn't pan out, you took a stand. So, panindigan mo na. So, by saying this, maybe the market did not take it well, and they started boycotting our products, eh, panindigan mo na. Kasi you did it because that was your stand. Ngayon, if you did it because you're going to resonate well with the market, because you 
did the right thing, for instance, and then they did not respond. And then you say, oh, we're pulling it out. So that means it wasn't a personal stance. Yeah. You let the market now influence you. So, umaga, so you're just playing with the market, so to speak. It makes you look more manipulative rather than real. Exactly. And it's important for a brand to have an opinion. It may not please the market that you're after or it may please the market that you're after, but what's important is have an opinion. Because people look for opinions. I mean, e- even us, sorry, like you, you'd watch, for example, a reporter that's very opinionated and you don't like this guy, but you'd watch this guy just to see what he will say. You know what I mean? It's kind of counterintuitive, but it happens. It's a phenomenon that our brain somehow functions that way. And so it's, it's that. Parting shot, sir, what would you say to brands or to businesses, especially now at this time? How can they approach this whole storytelling thing? May it be a perspective that you can give them or a starting point? I think there are a lot of good storytellers. There are a lot of idea generators. So for instance, in an agency, you have your creatives. But the thing is, sometimes it's, it's the bureaucracy that kills them. Okay, so there could be a good idea in your creatives. And then the creative talks to his or her account manager. The lower level brand manager agrees. Ganda. Out of the box thinking, very breakthrough. But then they have to elevate it to maybe the marketing manager or the real brand manager somewhere in the region. The creative and director. Then even the account director in the agency. Yeah. So, so the layers of decision making and the layers of people say, you know, tweak this, tweak this. So a breakthrough idea sometimes gets killed in the bureaucracy. So by the time it gets to the final approval, hindi na yun yung kwento. Okay. Or it could be probably, maybe they said, okay, let's try to do uh, indirect, subtle brand placement. Halos hindi mo makikita, hindi in your face. Okay na, okay na. Then suddenly the marketing manager says, marketing director says, but wala yung produkto natin. So okay na sana eh. Biglang, tsuk, nasingit in the shoe. So, I don't think it's a function of creativity. I don't think it's rocket science that even people in the agency or people in the brands don't know it. I think it's the bureaucracy. Parang takot pa kumalas. Remember, they all work eh. They all work for a boss. The boss works for a director. The director works for the CEO. The CEO works for the shareholders. If something goes wrong, nagkakaturuan, magsisisihan yan. So I think for a breakthrough idea, let's say for a storytelling idea, to really see the light of day, you're going to have to see all of these people agreeing and taking a stand. And sige, bahala na. Let's be brave about this. So in my thinking, I could be wrong, huh? this is what I think. Lang. Uh, Go for it. Smaller companies with clear decision makers are most likely to do breakthrough. Because may isa, oh, the box stops with me. Ako mag-decide eh. Wala, it stops with me. Ako yung kausap na ayan siya. Go, sige. Panyari, the Max Group. Max. Diba? Max, okay. If you look at their ads and their copies, nakakatawa eh. Di ba may aliens, gano'n. Very engaging. They take risks. Yeah. But it's not like your multinationals. It's not like your big companies na malaki. I think it's more a smaller family-oriented company. So yeah. the decision makers are probably fewer. So yeah. maybe someone in there just says, no, I want that. Let's try and do that. The decision making is there so that they can take risks. And it's obvious you see it. So I think it's a function of size and lack of bureaucracy. So that's the decision making is, is quite sharper. Maybe next time I can go and talk about uh, one of our campaigns for Victory Liner, which Perfect, is yeah. called Know Your North. It's really storytelling. The whole advocacy, I wouldn't even say campaign. It's an advocacy to just tell stories and make mini documentaries on anything as long as it's in the context of Northern Luzon. You will not find a bus, a station in all the stories. It's just stories about the North. So in a way, it's documentaries and stories produced by a brand under the heading Know Your North. Know Your North. Sir Gabby, thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. To everybody who enjoyed this episode, watch this episode, give us a follow, give us a comment, or not, totally up to you. But this is Tommy and...
here, Gabby, saying peace. We out. See you on the next episode.